Look at me, y'all. I look like a, uh, if I had on black pants, I'd I would look like men in black right now. I would look like men in black right now. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's Robin and I am back again with another video. So, some of you may know, some of you may not know, but the cat's out the bag. Um, recently I have been televised because I was testifying in a major high profile case. I'm not going to say which case. If you already know, then you know. If you don't, then you may or may not find out. I don't know. but. I decided that oh okay so let me back up let me just say for those of you who do not know already I am a crime scene investigator by profession um, I went to college at Delaware State University where I received my bachelor's in forensic biology and um, that's when well after I graduated that's when I started my career in crime scene so a few actually let me see when this was a few well august so yeah about a month a, over a month ago because it's now the end of september and this was the beginning of august august 2nd i put out there that i was going to make a video about crime scene what it's like to be a crime scene investigator and i actually never got around to filming the video but so many people sent me questions about um um you know, wanting to know what it's like to be a crime scene investigator. I have screenshots. Um, yeah, so I have lots of screenshots of all the questions people were sending me about um, what it's like to be a crime scene investigator. So I figured, why not now? Like, now is the perfect time to go ahead and answer questions. What it's like to be a crime scene investigator. So I will start by saying that um, to be a crime scene investigator, most agencies require you to have a four-year degree, usually in a physical science or um, some type of forensics. And if you don't, then you can usually get away with having a uh, degree in criminal justice um, and law enforcement experience. Sometimes they may say three years of law enforcement law enforcement experience or more may equate to the um, educational background that is necessary um, because a lot of crime scene investigators are not sworn police officers but it also just depends on what agency you work in the agency that I work in we have some sworn officers in our unit um, and they're they're considered detectives and then we have civilians like myself so my actual official title is crime scene analyst and prior to being a crime scene analyst, I was a crime scene technician. So the difference between crime scene analyst and crime scene technician is a crime scene technician basically responds to property crimes. So property crimes would be crimes where someone is not actually physically injured or put in harm's way. And examples would be if someone breaks into your house like a residential burglary where you're not home when it happens, that's a break-in. So if someone breaks into your house or someone breaks into your car or if someone goes into a store and steals something if there's like a criminal mischief like someone painting graffiti or breaking the window like say if someone comes and throws a brick through your window or like baby mama drama there's a lot of stuff with baby mama drama and baby dad and baby daddies we have a lot of stuff like that that happens and um sometimes people get angry at each other so they just you know do crazy stuff to each other's property and those are considered criminal mischief so that is what uh, crime scene technicians would go out to answer. Crime scene analysts, what I am currently, um, crime scene analysts answer high uh, major crime scenes. So major crime scenes including uh, robberies, assault, any, anything where someone is put in harm's way or direct danger, injured, anything like that, or killed. So we have kidnappings, assaults, um, robberies where if someone broke into your house and you were there then that's considered a robbery because you're there and you're put in direct in direct harm's way aggravated assaults sexual assaults homicides suicides um, police officer involved shootings um, 
traffic fatalities where if there's like a drunk driver or so, or uh, so, someone dies during a traffic accident, something like that. We respond to um, all calls. Um, yeah, we respond to all calls like that. So it's, it's a very interesting profession. And I decided when I was in the 10th grade, actually, I, I'm a very determined person. I decided in the 10th grade that this is what I was going to do for a living. I took my first forensics class in the 10th grade. I applied to college in the 11th, yeah, took my first forensics class in the 10th grade, applied to college to Delaware State University in the 11th grade, got accepted to college while I was in 11th grade for forensics, and I started um, college when I was 17 years old. Graduated from high school first, of course, and then I started college when I was 17 years old. Graduated in 2013, so if you want to do the math, you can go ahead and do that, but no, I'm not stating my age. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and I know I've been rambling a little bit, but I just want to give you guys a background of what a crime scene investigator is, the two types of crime scene investigators that we have in my department, which I'm not going to name. And before I go into these questions, I wanted to say that everything that I say in this video is my views, my opinions, my experiences. Whatever I say has nothing to do with the views and opinions of the department that I work for or any department in this country. These are simply my personal experiences that I have gone through. So I just want to make that clear. I don't want anyone speculating or think that I'm speaking for a police department. I am not. I'm speaking for myself. I'm speaking for my experiences, okay? Okay. All right, so I'll go ahead and get started. So um, these questions aren't in any particular order. I'm just going to go ahead and start asking some of the questions. And I'm not going to say names, but these are questions that were asked me on Facebook. So one of them says, what is the most horrific crime scene you have encountered um, the most horrific crime scene I have encountered, I would say, wow, there's so many. Um, that's actually a hard question because I think that what's horrific to someone may not be horrific to someone else. Like everyone has different things that bothers them. So what, what bothers me the most is, is when I see things that happen to animals. Um, oh yeah, I didn't say that. So crime scene analysts, we also go to um, animal cruelty calls. So this definitely wasn't the most horrific, but that's what bothered me the most was that someone killed um, a dog. They killed their mother's dog. And that was just crazy. And then they left it in the sink. And I have a little dog. Like they left a little Pomeranian. And I was like, I was like, are you kidding? Like who does that? Like how can you kill a dog? Like, and I, uh, it was blood on the floor and stuff and pee from the dog. Cause I know the dog was scared. I have a little dog. I'm about to show you them, her right now. Come here Caprice. Hey mama. This is my dog Caprice. Say hi, Caprice. Say hi, Mama. Hi, say hi to the people. <laughs> so that is my little dog. And that is the reason why I was kind of like freaked out when I was, not freaked out, but when I went to that scene, I was like, what WTF? <laughs> because I don't have kids yet. So maybe when I have kids, seeing injuries to children will, will um, you know, affect me more, but I think it just depends on, you know, your, your personal experiences. But I've also been to some other gruesome calls that were worse than that, but that's just the one that bothered me the most. Um, okay, so next, someone said, how soon are families able to access the scene, particularly if the crime scene happens involved within, blah, 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 particularly if the crime happens within the loved one's home or residence? Okay, so whenever I arrive on scenes, um, Sometimes family may still be in there. They're not really supposed to be. So I always ask the officers to remove the family from the scene or anyone that could be in the residence or the area, wherever the crime scene is. It could be in a business or a store, something like that. I always say, you know, have them leave the scene and um, they can't come back in until I'm finished processing and the scene is released by the officers. Um, next, what made you want to become a crime scene investigator? Um, I've always loved science growing up. My dad is a police officer, so I've always been... You know, I, I, I've never had a dislike for law enforcement. I, I grew up in a law enforcement home. My dad is a, a police officer, so I knew I would probably do something with law enforcement when I grew up. And, um, yeah, and the once I hit 10th grade, like I said, I fell in love with forensics in the 10th grade, so that's the reason why I decided to become a crime scene investigator. Um, someone says, sounds exciting. It sounds exciting. Um, teach people what they need to know to become one. So, like, I, I think I said that earlier. Yeah, I covered that earlier, you know, four-year degree um, experience or uh, background in law enforcement. Someone said, do you ever get scared? Uh, do I ever get scared? Not really. There was... I should have been scared. <laughs> there was one time where I actually, sh I'm sorry, I'm, I just want to say this. I'm filming on my iPad, so I keep like looking at myself. Normally I film on my phone, so it's easier for me to just look at the camera. I keep like looking back and forth, so I apologize for that. And I also haven't filmed in a while, so. Anyways, um, yeah, there was a time where I should have actually been scared, and I wasn't. 
and that was when I was at a scene I was walking down I had just arrived at the scene I was walking down the street and one of the officers that was down like further down by their squad car they were like they're like hurry up hurry up and I was like what <laughs> and I like I was like what and he was like hurry up come over here come over here and I was like what in the world he's like get down get down and then so I got down I was like what is going on and he was like he was like oh we got we got the suspect at gunpoint I was like why would y'all call me out here when y'all didn't have the suspect already? Y'all still got the suspect out here. So yeah, that that was that was a mess. That's happened before. So that was a time I should have been scared. And um, yeah. So you know what? There was another time I was actually scared. Um, ooh, it's I don't want to talk about it because a lot of people. It, it was like a national. Yeah, it was like a, a national case. And if I say what the if I say what it was, then people will know where I work at. So I don't want to say it. Um, so yeah, we'll just stick with that one. Someone said, what you have to do to get where you're at? I already said it. Someone said the pros and cons. Pros would be that it is a fulfilling career and that you will always have a job <laughs> because there's going to be crime scenes for until, until the end of time. So uh, yeah, you're always going to have a job. And cons would be we don't get paid as much as we should. We don't get paid as much as we should. Let me state that again because I want people to understand. Um, yeah, so when they say that police officers don't make a lot, think about the crime scene investigators as well. Whatever they make, we making a little bit less than that. You got a, a, a little bit or a lot of it, depending on where you at. So, yeah, cons is the pay is not the best for everything that we do. I think that crime scene investigators all across the country should definitely be paid more. Um... Uh, another con would be the the um, the risk of mental health issues such as PTSD, anxiety, stress, and um, yeah, that that's that's a really serious one. I've had to I've dealt with I've dealt with uh, depression and anxiety um, a lot after becoming a crime scene investigator, and it's for for multiple reasons. I'm not going to go into that in that in this video, but um, yeah, there that it's a very strong possibility that people who are crime scene investigators or in the law enforcement field um, are subject to depression and PTSD and there's a higher risk of suicide, there's a high suicide rate for people in law enforcement and in our field because of all the things that we see. You don't, you, you don't forget that stuff. You may go home and you try not to think about it and everything like that, but something is going to trigger you to remember something. So, and we have to, we're constantly exposed to it every day for eight hours. You're constantly exposed to, like my work day is someone's worst day. That's how I always look at it. My work day, I'll say that again, my work day is someone's worst day. I may go to five different calls in the night, and I've experienced five families' worst day. Would I recommend it to anyone? If so, what kind of person would you recommend it to? Because everything isn't for everyone. You're absolutely right. Everything definitely is not for everyone. Would I recommend it? You are a very inquisitive person if you like to help out the community. If you love forensics, it's, you have to understand that it's not like TV. It's some similarities, but it's not as glorified. It's not the same way how it's glorified on TV. It's not like that. Like you getting down into the nitty gritty. It's not all, uh, you know, happy where you can put in a fingerprint and next thing you know, it's popping back. It's popping back up. You get in a hit the next day or in 30 seconds. Like it doesn't work like that. Things take time. You're dealing with real people, real situations, and things can get real, real quick. So if you are, if you are the type of person where you're um, capable of working in a high, in a high stress environment, um, then if you think that you're up for the task then sure but I don't I, I wouldn't I wouldn't stop anyone from wanting to do it I would give you advice and everything but it's, it's really your choice if that's what you think that you could do then go for it someone asks how do you take care of your mental health um how do I take care of my mental health well you you have to take everyone needs a break everyone needs to take like a mental health day once in a while um, I've seen it happen uh, I've taken a mental health day before um, myself and you just I just pray I mean I'm a Christian so I just stay prayed up on my way to on my way to harder crime scenes like if I'm going to a shooting or if I'm on my way to a homicide what I always do is on my way there like usually my adrenaline is always uh rushing if I get a if I get a call and I know that it's like a chaotic scene prior to getting there because I can have a laptop and I can see everything on the call sheet so if I know that it's kind of chaotic before I get there sometimes my heart may be racing a little bit so what I do is I just pray in my head on my way there. If I'm standing over someone who is deceased to take pictures of them and everything like that, um, 
I just pray. I I always say a prayer for them in my head. I'm like, God, please, you know, please uh help this help this person's family. Please, please bring peace to this person's family. Um, please welcome them with open arms into your into your gates and stuff like that. So I always have say stuff like that in my head, and that helps me out a little bit. And um, also when I'm outside of work, what I like to do, I just like to take time to myself. I study a lot because I'm also in grad school for uh, I'm getting my crime, my master's degree in crime scene investigation. So um, yeah, I like to I, I just like I like to chill. I like to watch TV. I don't like to watch TV. Uh, police shows too much on tv or anything that ha is live that has to deal with law enforcement like such as live pd and stuff like that i used to watch it but i don't like watching it no more because when i'm at home i want to be at home i don't want to think about work i don't want to think about anything that has to do with law enforcement i literally like just put i put it out of, i try my best to put it out of my mind that's what i do <laughs> one of my co-workers asked do you like your co-workers and supervisors why or why not i ain't even going to answer that question <laughs> I'm not answering that question. <laughs> That's a funny question. I can't even believe she asked that. Um, what's the first thing that you do at a scene? The first thing I do at a scene is I talk to the officers that I see. <laughs> Any case ever stick with you? Yes, a couple cases have stuck with me. Um, and I can't really go into too much detail about them, but about the ones that are more recent because they're so recent but there was one when I was still a crime scene technician and I went to my first homicide to help out a crime scene analyst um when when I went to my first homicide that one will always stick to me because I was at the time 20 I started my career uh, as a crime scene investigator when I was 22 years old and I was 22 I went to the scene the guy was the same age as me and he was killed outside of his apartment he was in a gang and um I was just like looking at him I was like dang like like we the same age and it's just crazy how people's lives can be so different and you just you the exact same age as them and your life your life can just be so different depending on like the route you take and it was sad because his the whole apartment complex was out there and um this was a few years ago this was actually this was back in 2014 because i started in 2014 so it, it was it was really crazy i'll never forget that his mom was out there crying and like speaking in tongues and his family and they was like trying to come into the crime scene and the police was out there in riot gear like that was that was hectic that scene was crazy but um yes i'll never forget that someone said do people often compare what you do to what they see on tv like law and order or csi yes all the time and it's very annoying um do you find yourself taking work home with you mm, it depends on the situation sometimes yes most times no um do you get emotionally attached to situations i try my best not to it's happened one time um, I was only emotionally attached to, okay, so let me put this in context first. I've been a crime scene investigator for five years. Um, I work five days a week, okay? So I can answer up to five, six calls a day. One time I'll, I answer 13 calls in one day. Um, so you can, you're can you spending multiple hours on a call because you're working an eight-hour shift. Sometimes you're working longer. Sometimes I've worked I've worked up to well into the next day. I work 10.30. I'm supposed to work 10.30 p.m. to 6.30 a.m. So sometimes I can, you know, do overtime if I have a late call or something like that. Now, the question is, do you get emotionally attached to situations? And I have before because I had a scene a while ago um, and the person was, they were injured they were injured very very they were injured in a gruesome way they were thought to be dead i arrived at the scene because they were supposed to be dead and when i got there i was the first person to notice they're not dead they were still breathing and um that's the only that's that's the only time i was emotionally attached to a situation a crime scene um yeah what's the hardest thing you have to deal with at work people who are still alive <laughs> seriously okay, so let me <laughs> deal with you the reason why i say people who are still alive is because it's very i don't want it to sound like i'm heartless or anything but it's hard dealing with people who it's easier dealing with someone who's deceased taking pictures of them blah, 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 all of that but dealing with people who are alive that are like complainants and victims and stuff like that because there's so much emotion that they're expressing at the time they could be crying they could be angry sometimes they may feel like because we are uniform and similar to officers they may be like oh you, you know you're not here to help me y'all just you know say you know you know people don't really like officers like that so they just say anything and it's like no i'm here to, i'm here to help you i'm here 
I'm not here as an officer. I'm here to, to help you with, you know, I'm here for the evidence. I'm here to document if you have injuries, stuff like that. So it's, it's harder sometimes dealing with people who are alive, especially like when they're crying or like say if a mom comes to a crime scene where she sees her child dead on the ground, killed brutally or something like that. That's, it's hard hearing and seeing that because you don't want to get emotionally attached. I don't want to, I don't want to start feeling emotional because I'm looking at someone else emotional because I'm a, y'all, shoot, y'all can ask my boyfriend. I'm a very emotional person. I'm, I can be, I'm a very emotional person. It's crazy. You wouldn't know it if I was on a crime scene though because I don't, I don't cry at crime scenes or anything like that. Like you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to tell. But at home in my personal life, I am a very emotional person. So I just try to keep that out of it. Uh, someone said, what's the weirdest case you've had? Hmm. Weirdest. I don't know about weirdest. I actually wouldn't know. I don't, I don't know. I wouldn't say anything is weird. Um, we've had some things that are, uh, I don't know. I can't, I can't even answer that question. Um, those are all the questions I'm going to answer. I may do a part two. If I get more questions, um, then I may do a part two of this video. So I just wanted to go ahead and put this out there. I'm all dressed up. <laughs> look at me, y'all. I look like a, uh, if I had on black pants, I would look like men in black right now. Anyways, oh yeah, this is my lanyard from work. I don't want to show my, um, my badge my id but yeah this is my lanyard that i wear to work every day and i just i just came from court so i had to wear it because i have to show them uh when i'm walking into the courtroom well when i'm walking into the court building i have to show it so i can get past security like especially if i'm running late like gotta get there gotta get into the courtroom stuff like that gotta get signed in so um i take this with me to court so that I can you know bypass all of that anyways thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video if you have not already subscribed to my channel go ahead and hit that subscribe button please subscribe please stay tuned I got a couple more videos coming out soon for you guys um I will if you guys like this video just let me know in the comments if you guys want to see more um videos about what it's like to be a crime scene investigator um then just let me know and I will make those videos and so we're clear again these are my opinions, okay? Okay. <laughs> I just want that to be clear. I don't want anyone thinking that I'm trying to rep I'm not representing my department. I'm not representing any department right now. These are my personal opinions, okay? All right. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Bye. <laughs>